Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com. Welcome to this free full video song lesson where today I want to show you how to play the song Dakota by the Stereophonics Drums by Javier Whaler. And as always, I've got the full PDF drum chart for you to download from my website. You'll find a link beneath this video. So have this stuff printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It's going to make things a lot more, uh, make things a lot easier for you to follow and to understand. Uh, I've got a free lesson coming tomorrow as well, my last little Christmas treat for you guys before breaking up for the holidays. Um, so uh, check out uh, the uh, uh, YouTube channel, Facebook page and uh, website tomorrow for that. Uh, and uh, if you've got your own song suggestions and you might want to go over to my Facebook page, you'll find a, uh, a post near the top and uh, you can write your comments underneath there. Others get to vote on them and the most popular songs get chosen for future lessons. So this is a beginner lesson. Uh, I wanted to make this a beginner lesson because there's nothing really complicated going on with the drum parts. What makes it trickier and almost made it an intermediate lesson was the fact that the tempo is quite fast, 148 BPM. So to play eighth notes like this all the way through a three, four minute song, for a new beginner, for a new beginner drummer, is quite difficult. It's gonna be very tiring to keep that up all the way through. Not impossible, but, but tiring. So we'll talk about how to simplify some of the parts. Um, there's there's um, some structure to the choruses and bridges that we can simplify as well, but we'll go through all that stuff as, as, as we get to it. So basically, uh, the first thing to understand is, is our main drum beat for the song. And this is pretty much all the verses. We're playing eight thirds on hi hats I just showed you, snare drum on beats two and four, and the bass drum is playing one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, and That's the tempo of the song, roughly. So try, try to stay relaxed. Don't grip the stick too hard, otherwise you're gonna wear yourself out. Don't try to uh, overplay this. If you're finding those eighth notes way too difficult to keep up with or to, to maintain over the whole of the song, um, then you can just play quarter notes on the hi-hat instead. It's not gonna sound or feel the same, um, but it's one way to get through this song. If you just wanna play along to this song, um, uh, then this is one way to do it. Instead of playing one and two and three and four and, just play one and two and three and four and, you're playing just the one hi-hat note on beats one, two, three and four. Now that offers its own little sort of unique bit of difficulty in that the bass drum is then gonna be playing like this, one and two. You've got bass drums falling on and in between the hi-hat. So that might be your own challenge there, a, a different kind of challenge. But you could play the song like that. If that is still too difficult for you, um, and again, you just want to play along to the song because you love it so much, then you could just play this. I mean, it's not the drum beat on the song, but it'd get you through at least and get you playing along to the song. And then when we get to the choruses, perhaps you could have a go at the uh, um, that type of drum beat because you're going to see in a second, it is just playing quarter notes on the crash cymbal. So you've got some options there, but the main drum beat of the song Is that. So we get eight bars each line. Starts with the crash symbol on bar one. Now you don't feel the need to rush back to the hi-hat for the and the beat one as I've written on the chart. You could play one and two and three. Uh, sometimes what I do with this sort of tempo, you got, because um, uh, it's going by quite quite fast, that crash symbol is going to ring out for the whole of beat one. You can come down, back down to the hi-hat for beat two and not feel the need to go one and two or one and two and you could play one and two and three. And then from beat two, your hi-hat starts playing the eighth note. So you could go. That's certainly what I play and most drummers play. So there's an option for you there as well. At the end of each line, um, we get these little um, distinctive um, drum fills. <clears throat> and the first one occurs at the end of the first line, the intro. The first eight bars are just the intro. Uh, and we get the, the, the definitive way he plays, Javier plays this throughout the song that, that occurs the most. We get one and two and, and then instead of playing three and four and, he plays three, just the one bass drum, and then the surprise snare drum on the and of beat three. Three and four and. <clears throat> the and of four is gonna be left out because we're gonna open the hi-hat and let it ring out for the whole of the beat. So we get this, three and four and one 
and two and three and four and so open the hi hat on the and and the and of three and beat four with those two snare drum notes. Perhaps create a two bar loop, bars seven and eight for example. When you loop it, perhaps practice putting a crash in at the beginning of each of the two bars. And when you close it on beat one, close the hi-hat on beat one, you play a crash. So a bit faster now, once you've got that comfortable, start to speed it up. If you want to leave out the open hi-hats, Fine, it's not gonna sound the feel, it's not gonna feel the same at all, but you could play. That'll get you through it, but it shouldn't be too difficult for you to open the hi-hat there on the and of three and four. So that's what we want to get down eventually. Then we go on to verse one, and we've got eight more bars which are identical to the first eight bars of the song. So the intro is the same as the first line of as verse one, eight bars in each line. Second line, exactly the same, except notice bars seven and eight. Underneath it, I've written a crescendo, which is really for the, the, uh, the hi-hat to slightly open over the length of those two bars. So that's, that's quite an intermediate sort of technique where you're maintaining the snare drum, bass drum, um, and hi-hat stick but your hi-hat foot is opening ever so slightly over the length of the two bars so we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three so you don't want to play and open it immediately if you can avoid it you want to sort of gradually build it up uh, or open it over the length of, the two, of those two bars the eighth bar ends with instead of before we had three and four well the hi-hat's going to be fully open at that point so we plays three and four, or whatever crash number you like. But instead of playing and four as before, we now play and four with snare and crash instead of snare and hi-hat. So let's create a four bar loop. It's always good to, when you're practicing something specific, to play some bars before and after it so you don't feel like you're just repeating the drum fill or the groove or the idea you're trying to practice just round and round on its own. You want to put it in context with some stuff around it. So let's play bars um, for uh, five, six, seven, and eight. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So I'm slightly opening the hi-hat slowly, and I'm also so, sort of starting to hit the hi-hat a little bit harder to make those hi-hats ring out. Not too hard, but it also helps to slightly hit the hi-hat slightly, slightly harder over the, over the length of the two bars to make them sound more prominent. So. We then go into our first chorus. So the hi-hat can close on beat one of the next bar, or you can leave it open, it doesn't matter, because then we're gonna to move to the crash cymbal. You could use the right cymbal instead if you wanna give your crash cymbal a rest. You could play this, all, all, the, all I'm about to show you on the right cymbal, but I believe Javier is using a crash cymbal to play on. So we're moving to this new drum beat where the snare drum is being played on all four beats with the quarter note crash cymbal. Now, what Harvey is actually playing with his right hand is more is the eighth note version. But you can hardly hear those um, hi-hat notes in between on the ands. And so I wanted to make this as simple a fuse as possible. Also to give your right hand a break in between the verses where we're just playing quarter notes up here. So that sounds exactly the same as the recording, but notice or understand that Harvey is actually playing which is a bit more washy, you sort of, um, you sort of, uh, it spreads out the crash cymbals, um, but you don't have to do that, especially as, as this is a beginner lesson. Just play. So we've gone from to. Now underneath it, the bass drum is playing some some variations, and the the choruses and the bridges are slightly different with the, with the, what the bass drum's doing. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you bars three and four in a second, and suggest that 
If you're finding any of this too difficult to read off the page, you just want to play along with the song, then bars three and four are the bars you should play for all the choruses and all the bridge bridges. It'll work just as well. But I want to show you the variations that Javier plays. So, first bar, he only plays the bass drum on the and of one and the and of three. It's an interesting idea. We get one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And he then moves into bars three and four where he plays the bass drums in between every quarter note, which is a lot easier to play. You don't have to feed it, you just have to sort of, it's also pilot almost. So we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Bar four, he ends it on beat four, lets it ring out for the whole of the beat. And then we go back, well, I'm going to use a different crash symbol. You can use the same crash symbol. The last four bars of the chorus are back to the hi-hats. So the same way we talked about coming back off the crash symbol. Um, so we get bars one and two and bars three and four slightly different to each other. We get one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. One and two, three and four. Back to the eighth notes. Now, as I said, you, if you find any of this too tricky, just play. During each of these sections, that will work just as well. No one's going to hear the difference. But if you want to have a go at some of these variations with the bass drum, there you go for that. So we get formal bars of the eighth note groove at the end of the line. And then the line ends with one and two, three and four. The open hi-hat version into a crash cymbal, back to verse two. So before we go on, let me now play for you the whole of verse one and chorus one. We'll leave out the intro because the first line of verse one is exactly the same as the uh, as the intro. So um, yeah, verse one, chorus one, up to speed, without me yakking on over the top, so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. under verse 2 and let me just check this verse 2 is exactly the same as verse 1 in its structure so we get the 3 and 4 at the end of the first line and 3 and 4 with the slow build up opening of the hi-hat over bar 7 and 8 for the second line so we've gone over that already chorus 2 shows our last variation um, of um, the bass drum pattern when he's playing 1 2 3 4 so this is also quite cool I think most drummers wouldn't play it this way, um, but it works really well for the song. You can sort of feel it a bit better or hear it. Um, what I mean is um, it, it's, it's, it works um, really well for the song. So we'll maintain that bass drum pattern of one and two, three, and that we had in the verse, but underneath the bass drum snare drum. So it's very similar to the one and two, three and four, but now he's playing the bass drum on one and on the, the three as well. So we get one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. This is probably the trickiest one to play for some drummers because playing the bass drum with the snare drum at the same time can feel very weird for some people when they first start. But he's playing that for the whole of uh, all four bars, the first half of that first line. But it comes out of it the same way, with just a beat four on its own, then back to four bars of, of eighth note groove, and that first line ends with that version, not. Then on the second line, it changes it up. So chorus two actually has two different variations. The second line is, is, is the same as our first chorus, 
One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. One and two, three and four. And that line ends with the. So, last time I mentioned it, um, if you find this, this, this just, just makes this too hard for you to play, just play through all of those um, four bar sections for both lines, that'll work just well for you. So I'll play this up to speed for you in a moment. Let's go on to page two, because we pretty much got the whole song down now. Bridge one, he plays for, um, uh, for the first four bars. The, suggestion I, the version I suggested for you. Then um, bar eight of that line has a slight opening at the end, just in bar eight, but you could open it over bar seven and on bar eight, or just leave out the open hi-hat stuff altogether. But just at the last bar he plays, so the hi-hat's sort of fully open by three, beat three. Or is, no, half open, doesn't really matter. But it's like a little subtle thing that I thought I'd include in the chart because it's on the song. Hi-hat closes again for the second line, and we get four more bars of And the end of that line is Closes um, when we go into verse three. So now let me play for you a section of the song that has the most changes. I'm going to play the whole of chorus two on page one, and then the whole of bridge one, so you can hear all the different chorus variations next to each other in context. Here we go. So on to verse three, and the first line ends with, the second line ends with, and building up of a bar seven and eight, so the same as our standard verse structure we talked about. Chorus three, first four bars, as that version ends with, second line, then, we talked about that as well, ends with, so we've we, we gone over all these structures already, Bridge two, exactly the same at, no, sorry, bridge two. Yeah, bridge two is exactly the same as bridge one. It's that for four bars, first line, open slightly on bar eight, the hi-hats. Second line ends with, and then our outro is the final thing I want to talk about, um, where we get this for eight bars. That version, and the song ends with this. Uh, one last bar, one and two, three and four and. So it's very quiet in the mix. I'm pretty sure it's what he plays. He plays a flam on beat four. Now, if you don't know what a flam is, you don't know you don't know how to play a flam. Play the floor tom and snare drum together to create the same sort of effect. But notice the bass drum is played on the and of beat four after that snare drum on beat four, and that's where the song ends on the upbeat on the and of beat four. So it's an interesting way to end the song. So let's create a two bar loop and I'll play the floor tom, the floor tom and snare drum version and the flam version a couple of times each so you can hear the different ways you can play it. And that's it. So before we finish, let me now play for you the last eight bars of the outro, up to speed. Here we go. So 
So if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the chart that came with this lesson. Again, the link is beneath this video. And then while you're at my website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for £97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. But I'm currently running a 50% discount over the Christmas period. I'm probably going to extend it past Boxing Day, but I'm, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. But if you want to save 50%, so for £50 you get access to over 550, almost 600 full video song lessons where... Just like this lesson, I teach you a song from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart that goes with each of those lessons. And like I say, I've got almost 600 famous and popular songs where I teach you a song from start to finish. I think I've got at least one or two other stereophonic songs up on the website also. So you've got some stereophonic stuff to get your teeth stuck into if that's what you want. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds more little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week, and that's some iller on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.